Bang. Well, no, I meant for like the yeah, when so, Batfire jumps in. Yeah, so uh, like, yeah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, the only problem fine. is if you grab the Earthshaker, if you don't kill him before the last who's up, he's going to be echo up in your ass. Yeah, like, yeah. That is the danger. It's scary. Yeah. And Viper as well, he's so tanky. It's like a Let's countdown. Survive. You're like, if we don't kill this guy Five before he dies, remaining. we're going to eat a slam. Mm. But Alliance last hero, of course, first we have a ban Ten here and a pick, but remaining. Alliance last hero, I think, needs to be someone who can clash and fight and Five get kills with remaining. the Batrider. Mm. Because so far, sure, you have the Visage Birds and you have a Venge, who's pretty good to have with her stun, Alliance but they need more damage pick. into that. Do you think even with all the Dreo bonus damage, on three ranged heroes, or four ranged heroes, do they still need more damage? No, I, I'm saying that Drow Ranger will probably not be ganking around with the Batrider. Yeah. So, like, they need to have someone who can dedicate his time to gank with Batrider, and maybe even just the two of them get kills alone. Is it a mid hero as well? Is it? Yeah, they should be picking up their mid now, as Batrider, I expect, should be offlane. And, Storm of Spirit. course, both teams could Ten be switching up. Remaining. I think Storm Spirit would be a reasonable pickup here. That's Storm would be pretty Five decent. Yes, is fairly good against him with his stuns, but it's just about how to get away with laning men. But you have Reserve the Draw Ranger aura, and what that extra bit of damage could help. Templar Assassin. Like, how does Templar Assassin do in this game against? Well, I, it's really sad. I, I don't think you want to pick it. If you're Alliance, at least you don't really want to pick it because there's Viper and Bristleback, which are really, really tough heroes to go up mm. against. Which Doctor is okay to go up against. Mm. They're going to go for Invoker. I like Ooh. this pick. 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 This is a hero that Hani is also very comfortable on. He has played it so many times. It's always the classic sword invoker going into the double forge spirits and then trying to push. And it works really well with the draw range aura. It's such a, like, that push is the scariest thing ever. Like, for example, four anchors here, if they push a lane after they win a team fight, they, they won't really get that much. They're not that fast. Sure, they have the Witch Doctor heal to get them back into fighting shape. But the Alliance, oh my god, that push. Like, Ten the aura from Venge, oh, it's just like crazy. Yeah, that's true. So if they all can Five just stay alive, because remaining. even just the familiars can do so much work if Drow Ranger is alive. And really, like. when Drow hits level 11, is when you're going to be scared. So, like, and going to be picked up. We have had. Ooh. Some Lycans previously here, but they have been struggling every single time. And against Ventual, with her swap, Batrider, who can also hold people through BKB. I mean, it's a decent hero in terms that he chases in on the Draw Ranger, and that's something you really want, closing the distance, of course. Their team is also really weak alliance. Like, say you get mm. the early Necro book on Lycan and you charge in at them, and you, you don't get, as you said, swap their Batrider, yeah. you'll you will eat them alive. Yeah, that's true. And if he goes for the early Necro book, I think that could be very good for uh, for the Finn stack here. Of course, Finn stack is the 4 ASC as the 5 finish lineup. But which lineup do you really think that you favor here, Perry and Shane? Go on, Shane. I favor Alliance like Ten tenfold, nearly. I think a team that can push towers and get objectives after winning fights Five and still have remaining. like insane physical damage, like even with alacrity on Invoker, like if they put that on Drew early game, oh my god. Like from, from what we saw yesterday, uh, when this Drow got going, I mean, the damage was it's just filthy, isn't stupid. It? I mean, battle. it helps like a lot, you know, Invoker likes to get farm, he now has farm. I mean, Visage is already really good at picking up kills and things with the soul assumption and now he's going to be hitting pretty hard. Venge with the armor reduction and now she's going to be hitting pretty hard. I mean, it, it's stupid. It's it's crazy how, how good the aura is. So I think Alliance's team for this one is just too much damage. The one thing I see though is Invoker going mid against Viper. Like he's, he started off with Quas first. Like he's he's gonna have a he's gonna struggle at this I think without that the base damage from Exord I guess it's to stop the harass mm. but I, I really think Invoker is one of them heroes like we saw Hany play him yesterday and I spoke to him in, outside actually about it and he was saying that like Invoker needs so much farm and he usually goes maybe two or three items before mm. he gets the Aghanims because he was too low level mm. yeah but in, in this game in the game yesterday he was panicking you know what I mean he was like okay we need to get this damage out this Earthshaker set makes him look like Bane. Where is it? <laughs> you mean with the mask? Look at that mask. Yeah, he looks very angry. Oh, Even angrier. I guess he, has he could be smiling. You can't see his mouth. I'm smiling. Those eyes and that frown. Yeah. I mean, he's frowning more he's than frowning Hani like was. Hanny. He's yeah. the old Hanny frown. <laughs> the old Hanny frown. It's a thing now. Interesting to see Ace having a double ring of protection build, by the way, on this Batrider. I've been so. seeing this a lot more recently. Mm. Yeah. I mean, begins. a lot of heroes can benefit a lot from it. And this is eight armor onto a Batrider, so pretty hard to yeah. harass him. And yeah. it makes your tangles worth so much more. It also, like, you can, well, he goes Tranquil Boots and then Basilius Ring against, like, so much physical damage from, like, Bristleback, Lycan, Witch Doctor. Yeah. 
Yeah, Boogie trying to man fight a little bit, but realizes that sticky stacks are not that much fun to fight against. And of course, the armor pretty hard to harass against, even for a Witch Doctor who has so much damage. So interesting rotations from both teams here. Mm. Looking at uh, Vengeful just trying to be aggressive on the mid lane. He's trying to secure the Honey's Farm by giving them that early ward. Yeah, very sneaky ward. The world I think uh, um, ganking for Invoker at like level 4 is one of the easiest heroes in the game to gank for. Like if he has his, spell, his spells correctly yeah. ordered, you, you cannot really mess it up. Yeah, with a Forge Spirit along with uh, Cold, Cold Snap and a Sun Strike, yeah. it's very easy. Or even with the Ghost Wall early on, to be honest, can secure many kills. Uh, and people a little bit underuse that spell. He's actually going... Uh, oh, he's going for Quas West wait, this yeah. game. That's curious. I haven't seen him play this in all of the games that oh, Honey have wow. been running in Volker. He's super dead. But yeah, this time on mid lane, the ES already having a really big impact. And this is just what we were talking about as well. Jarex loves to do early rotations. Was that a lane smoke, was it? Yeah, well, he was running on. I did see him a smoke there, actually. Bottom. Lycan is so low here, just by his biggest stacks. The bongo goes in, but it does not stop this kill. And I don't think he can kill an ace either. He has so high armor. He might be fine here. How are you, Andy? I'm joined by Andy. Draskal like Andy. Him. Yeah. You can talk into mine. I haven't been mic'd up, but I'm here. Yeah. Very nice to see you. And oh, look, look at bottom now. Trying to get the kill. Batter does get it with a Fisher and right click from Witch Doctor as well. Very well done. And top lane, meanwhile, aggressive onto Trixie, but he should be perfectly fine here as Bristleback. A little bit tankier here. You're, the, the difference between the uh, the bristle without the wisp is, is interesting, but also the difference between being able to range to harass him. Yes. Yeah, like the, the slot really couldn't do a damn yes. thing. No, it's it's a very different mechanic or very different matchup in itself. Because I think that was the first question I had for you this morning: is what do you do against that? You don't have a melee carrier. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. We were talking about that a little bit after yesterday, and oh, wow, we see Boogie has so many stacks on him here right now. Nice Fisher coming out, but. Gives a kill onto the Vengeful. That is Boogie gonna make it away? I think he's dead here to Ace right click. No. If it had been a Fisher, but I think it was either on cooldown or lack of mana. Yeah. Top lane, meanwhile, gonna try and kill yeah, off Trixie, and he's gonna There's go down. Assumption. It's so good at that. Yeah. Securing kills. It really is. And this is a sad time to die as well, right when your lane is pushing this much. Does he have a TP at least so he can go back to the top lane? I think someone is gonna buy it for him because Radiant's he really needs to get up there and take that attack. EXP. Boogie shares a TP with his friend. I'm kind of worried about Hani in mid here. Like, he, with the Quas Wex build and just uh, an old talisman, he has like no base damage to outlast it to Viper. Yeah, I agree. It's very, very hard lane to win. I mean, sure, you have some region and you have more tankiness with your points into the Quas, but. I mean, oh no, the micro, the micro on the courier. Oh, nice oh. bait though, <laughs> turns into a little bit of a... He couldn't have one-shot it anyway, I don't think. Have you seen did a video where they baited a guy on the courier? He did it like four times in a row. In the, the same game? It, yeah, by the end of it, they were just killing themselves laughing. They were like, you can't go for it again. Yeah, I, I dream about Blitz yeah. a lot, actually. You do? Do you really? Yeah, yeah. beautiful man. Yes, he is a very nice guy to be honest. He is. So Lycan, meanwhile, did die on bottom lane once again here to the Batrider. So Ace is having a fantastic start on his Batrider. Did he even die once? Okay, he died once, but he had, <laughs> he had three kills. How does they both just punch each other? We're like, right, see you tomorrow. Well, it's a lot to do with my nuts and his rotations, to be honest. Like, he's kind of just staying off map, and um, they have no vision of where he's rotating to. He's just kind of running around the place. Very nice Fisher keeping him close to but wow the oh, HP on Ace is he gonna be fine here. No. Might one big punch. ES walking one big punch. in the ring Two punches. punches. Yes. Really nice play there by Jarek's getting in and actually getting both of those punches off. <laughs> nice to see that the claw is back. Just standing here on the desk next to us is Draskal. But this lane, this game is really, really aggressive, but I still think that slightly ahead is Alliance with the fact that Drow Ranger is not being stopped that, uh, that much in terms of farm. Uh. And is he going for the same build as he did previously with the triple Wraith Band? It was, really all of them. it was really good. Yeah. Just to get that early push, is it with the base coming? Yeah. He hit for like nearly 150 or something stupid at the level. Holy crap. Level yeah, 6. At, at really level 6 or 7, yeah, already. Like most Drows I see, they always go Midas to get them early levels. Yeah. But I guess it's kind of similar because you get the agility. He this just doesn't hear the hard mixing anything. Yeah. Exactly. So this buffs his entire team since everyone is a range hero. It makes a lot of sense going into a triple Wraith Band build with power treads of agility. And uh, it just really helps a lot because Batrider, even a hero who normally has solo bat, uh, base attack damage, 
with some sticky stacks and the damage from draw, he actually hits decently. Like we were talking earlier about uh, Viper against Invoker here, and look at the CS difference. He nearly, nearly doubles the CS. Yeah, Viper is doing really, really well and just winning this lane. And it's a tough time as well when you're falling behind laning stage of Invoker. The thing is, well, I, I understand his logic for going uh, Quas Wex, because they have so many strength heroes that have so little mana pool. Like if you EMP Tornado, like Air Chick or Bristleback or Lycan, they're kind of useless. Like they, they require mana for everything. Yeah, in, in a way, I can understand. The EMP is very good against Bristleback in specific, I would say, as well. But it's pretty good think, against Viper as well. Don't you think that actually. the damage is worth more, though? And especially I, I, since you're laning against a Viper, because you fall behind in last, it's how do you recover on a Quas Wex Invoke? So you can't jungle with the four spirits. There's, like, he's not going for a Midas. You need to get that like phase boot so he can yeah. keep up. I, I, I agree. Like Definitely, I think I would have gone Exhort like, in my potato bracket Invoker. Okay, yeah. Well, I think the... Hmm. I think it's a little bit of a waste to go for Quas Wex when you have so much setup for some stacks as well. Oh, with oh, the mid, they're trying to get a ganker on the Alex. Nice damage with the right pick, but instant TP reaction from the ES. Actually, kind of secure the kill in the end here with a tornado. Does bring him down. So successful gank from Alliance, even with the nice rotation. But if he can keep getting kills. And if he can start ganking with the Batrider in the mid game, then it will be fine. But he's not having that free farm that you would like to see on a Quas Wex Invoker. Because normally, Quas Wex, you think to yourself, oh yeah, the early Orchid silencing people mm -hmm. from ghost, uh, ghost Walking, that's a really effective gank. But he's not going to have an Orchid anytime soon. Like, he's not going to have it before 20 minutes in this game, I think, if he even does decide to go for that build. Does he go back for a Midas? I've seen some, some people do this on Housewood. I think Midas into four Staff, or just even four Staff Blink early on, try to build something like that, Mo and go fighting. Yeah. Because he has to trust Lodi in this game, I think. Let Loda farm up and be the carry. Obviously, you're not going to get too many items when you're losing your lane against the Viper, because how do you really recover that hard? Um, but... I believe they have the heroes to do it, and the familiars, once they get up as well, can provide the extra damage that is needed. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually really impressed by my nuts in this game. He's kind of been getting work done. Yeah, he's he went mid, kind of saved Annie's ass. Yeah. Because he's struggling, and then I'll put him, get the Viper kill with him. That's true. He's been in four kills already. So, a lot of rotation still, just a lot of play around the mid lane. Bottom lane now, like him getting caught out again. Once again, he has the magic six trying, trying to stay alive. Actually, oh. gotta go and punch the vengeful. Might bring her down. Uh, but I think he just thought he could get on the venge. And yeah, Lycan Wolves does get the kill on yeah. vengeful in the end, but it's still a two for one trade with vengeful being the one to die. So Batrider having the time of his life here on this offlane. Eight minutes in, thousand and one hundred gold with tranquils and a ring of protection. So early, early blink for a. Uh, Offlane laning Batrider. Yeah, for sure. They haven't really been. Oh, they have one stack up in the Dire Jungle, but that's it. Yeah. So they they actually realize okay, Ace doesn't need the stack, so our supports can farm our jungle exactly. more. Exactly. Stacking the far more left camp, so it's close to a Draw Ranger. Exactly. Yeah. And same thing in the Alliance Jungle. There. Actually, look at that. Batrider going oh in to try and steal some here, and he has maxed out Firefly with level three Sticky. He steals this really fast, so this is gonna go into a Blink Dagger fund, and uh, that's not gonna be any good news He's for really close as well. Dyer's it's not a charitable fund. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's actually not that. Mm. He needs it though. Yeah. And he's starting to catch up though in the CS. Yeah. Oh, mid. All he about the stacks now. Even Bristleback going in and trying to get the the jungle jungle going with the the ancients, of course. But uh, how do you feel that this game is gonna play out? Since Drawranger is farming nonstop, Lycan is being contested a lot, and even getting initially upon once again by Ace here. Like oh, Ace is dead. Yeah, he's definitely dead there. Does lose a lot of HP, but the shape shift is really, really strong. Well, actually, Honey's trying to gank here. He nearly killed there, like him with the EMP there. Yeah, under that's true. One he more punch. He gets the kill. Oh, the oh wow! Nice. The stick. Nice la. God bless Bye, you, Ruby. stick. God bless you. That was like a six stick or something. Very good. Just hold on to it till attack. the very end there. Boogie with the mind games. Top tower is gonna Radiant's be playing. Ventral getting last fallen. hit on that. And Loda seems to be going the same build as last time we saw him. Gonna head into the Master Madness now and just kind of use the space they've been given. Yeah. Because who is really gonna go up and contest Loda? No one is gonna go there and like gank him. It's if you were really asked happening. to, would you? 
No. No. So he's even just if, basically he, fine, isn't he? Even mm. if you had, say, Witch Doctor and Earth Shaker, do you still think they, they still wouldn't go? Because I mean, of the visage? Is that the. the I think visage? they would have. Like, they don't have the heroes to go up there and punish him, right? It would be different if they had stuff like a Doom with a Blink or whatever, but they have a Viper lineup with a Lycan and a Bristleback. These are not the guys that you're like, oh god, suddenly is here, you know, yeah, the yeah, monstrous yeah. wolf. I mean, these are pushing heroes that work really well together. They can maybe skirmish really well, but they're never really going to surprise you coming out of nowhere. Yep. So that means Loda can farm pretty safely in his jungle. He's and gone just for that same build. Though. Snowball as hard as possible. Triple Wraith Band, Morbid Mask, Treads, and a Stick. As well, the Visage is going for that medallion. We saw in the last game, the last series, when Alliance played, they really, really like to get that early Roshan. That's true. And with this team, with the minus armor from Venge and the medallion, and all the physical damage, yeah. they can do Roshan so easily. And it, the crossroads and Volker, like we were talking about, how it's not good in lane, but in a like small choke point, like outside Roshan, it's like so good at the defending. I saw some peculiar stat from Nahas, actually, that medallion was extremely rare, that teams don't buy nearly enough. Uh, versus on mid. They fight here, trying to go on Valik. No matter of anything after that, he's he very oh, nice Witch Doctor ult. Look at it go! That is a nice looking, ult. Uh, Cancelled by the by the familiar in the end, but we're still seeing a like and just change the back off here, it seems. Black Rider sitting around like, hey, was there any fight for me as well? But very nice Witch Doctor ulti. That really turned the fight and managed to get a kill onto the Invoker. It was the old behind the trees there. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you want to do it. Backrider trying to yeah. grab him onto the hill here. We don't pull him up, but uh, you know, he does have a Kelly Blade, so is he gonna get away? Oh, he's gonna die. He can't get away from this. He does pull on in the end, and now Booby even and he's he's down. Down. He's making and his storm. Yeah, yeah, he really is. So 2,900 <laughs> gold all of a sudden onto this Batrider. Really happy with his little little engagement there. And of course, he had a little bit of help from uh, Vexpo, but he didn't even need it that much. Blink Dagger completed. He has TP scroll. And it seems that 4ASE want to put the aggression onto uh, Drow Ranger now, or top lane at least. But Drow has Dyer's already headed down. Gotta go for of Dominator this time. So look for him to stack up a little bit in the jungle and just see smoke in the Roshan. Yeah, I believe that this was a smoke in because there's a ward and there's no sign of the uh, rotations from 4ASE. Which is very easy. This to is, do. Honestly, this is what I've been doing the last game. Because I think that they just get these Roshans at 12 minutes into the game. Yeah. And all, like Loda just got. Like, how many levels from that? Like, so much level. Oh, let me see the... Dyer's yeah, you get about one and a half attack. level yeah. just as Radiant's a solo hero at level 9 going into attack. Russia, so... He's already had three times. Look how much he hits. Yeah. Tower he hits really hard. Really, really, really hard. Top lane now. We see this Invoker. He's going for the Midas, but... It's more about the control from the Invoker. Trying to create space and allow Loda to farm up. And it's nice Damn to see that he has doubled. that understanding that he doesn't need to get items in this game. This is all about getting Loda's buff up, making it strong enough, and now maybe trying to get Jarek's there, but I think he should be fine. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, he might just Actually, he might just go down to the right clicks here as Honey keeps chasing. The last right click goes on to Trixie. Trixie gets away and Jarek's just TPs out as well. Was uh, They were worried about TPs in, I guess, because they didn't have uh, vision. Did you see the turn rate on Viper there with all those stacks? He, he like... I mean, it's ridiculous, really. Batrider is so unfair to have to try and uh, do anything against. Yeah, Espe especially with long stuns, like, say, Air Shaker, for example. Like, if he has to turn all the way around yeah. the stun, it's, like, the funniest thing ever. Yeah, true. They even improved his, his turn rate a little bit, at least. Yeah. So he's more than decent now. Oh, wow. Oh, they actually find their ancients here. Trixie's kind bank. of quilling in anger. Yeah. They want to steal them. They do have the ages on Loda, of course, so feeling a little bit confident, even finding Illusion Room, but with all of uh, 4 ASE here. They're just trying to kill it off fast. I don't know. I think Alliance want to contest this, really. They're going behind with Honey. This is a very Ooh. nice position for Evoker. Oh, he could get big EP here. I think he's good. He burns all their mana. Backrider grabs in one, pulls in Jarek and kills him off. So he has already gone. Nice tornado going down. Can he chase for more? Oh, wow. Witch Doctor can get caught out as well. I think that's going to be two kills, and now just clearing up the Ancients. Already dead to a Drow Ranger right click. So the Viper went for a mechanism against Quas, Wex, and Volker. And like, mechanism costs 225 mana. And like, there's no way he's casting that if he gets the MP on him. Like, he can't cast anything nearly. So do you think this is the right choice, or should he went for 
something else, like damage items or more. It's maybe it's tough items. to say, really. I've seen some teams where Radiant they just rush for the Crimson Guard on Viper, which makes a Radiant's lot of sense. Costs no mana at all, gives you nice survivability. I mean, back in the days, people would even run Vanguard sometimes with yeah, Viper. Yeah. Suggested item. So it is <laughs> suggested item. That's why. But it, it is decent. <laughs> but as you say, with this with this mech, if he yeah. ever gets EMP'd, he's not gonna do anything. Like they only have one pair of mana boots on Jerex, and mm. that's it. Yeah, I think it's definitely a tough spot. I guess a class Rex Invoker, I think you shouldn't really go mech on Viper. But it's kinda hard to call. But two of a man now getting caught out as well a little bit here. Being run down with the vengeful stun. There's no battery lasso just yet with five seconds cooldown and no mana anyway. So they're just gonna walk away. Maybe they can chase down and get a return kill here, though. Ace actually doesn't have a magic stick against, like, Bristleback, Viper, you know... Well, Viper Doctor, doesn't. Witch Doctor, yeah. They have a lot of expandable stuff. That's... Yeah, well, you could go for it. You should probably replace your just Ring of Protection, but he's just all about the bigger items now, mm -hmm. it seems. Already has Blink and Four Staff at 15 and 50. He's That's crazy. Great. Yeah, he's, he's doing really well. But I is. think Alliance are... Normally they would just want to farm, but right now as they have the Blink Dagger finished up on Draw Ranger as well, I think they're happy to fight if the Aegis is still on. Else they will just kind of go into more of a farmy role where Invoker is going to split push top lane now. And it seems for ASC realize they can't fight into the Aegis, so they have to wait a little bit before they turn up the heat. It's extremely difficult to gank Annie as well here. He's like, first of all it's daytime and he has the EMP tornado like completely queued up, so he can run away at the speed of light if anyone comes near him. Dyer's yeah, middle that's tower is under really true, and hammer. again, for ASC, Radiance not really with the heroes that are attack. excelling at ganking people. I mean, sure, ES early on in his rotations, but now in the mid-game, there's no surprise you're dead kind of hero. It's all on Jerex to get this blink dagger. Like, and mm. where does he find the space to farm it, though? Like, it's against, say, a bot rider who's constantly going into your jungle and, and doing really well at the moment as well. Space and time, especially, because he has been running around and trying to help his team, so at that time, you're sacrificing a lot of your farm. Yeah, he's playing cheeky here on bottom lane with his uh, Blink Dagger just sticking around in the jungle. He really wants to find a kill here. So, just looking at this juicy Viper, but of course, he does have a... And he's coming up with the Viper. Yeah, Hany goes there, drops down the tomato, and the EMP pulls him back with the Viper ulti, but Witch Doctor once again throwing down the That's Blink Dagger. Nice. That's really nice. Doing so much damage. Valix is still probably gonna go yeah, down here with the Urn on him. He does go down in the end, and Swap now gonna secure a kill on Luki as well. Again, so, no mana to mechanism. You try to survive. Uh, you try to save your teammate. Boogie did a really good ulti once again. I like his position and, and mm. his play on Witch Doctor, but you just have to respect that the enemy ganked with more resources than you were defending with. Also, Ace's flame break was so perfectly positioned, like he was just at the edge of the explosion. Mm. Yeah, that was was really good. And looking Radiant's over to the Visage now, just attack. all the gold on Alliance Radiant is really stacking up. Fortified. I mean, they're going up on 10,000 gold advantage and can about the same in experience. He has 2,500 gold on a Visage at this stage with Medallion. So he's looking great for finishing up something like an Aghanims in very reasonable time. This is what we were talking about earlier, though. Like, they get attack. one kill on a Viper, and they're, they're nearly going to get two towers, though, just because of their push potential. Yeah, this is like, of course, trying to stop them here, but again, <laughs> It's so easy to disjunct where you can just throw a tornado, even drop the EMP. Maybe they're gonna get the vengeful now, and it seems Alliance are just saying, okay, you're you're dead, but what? You're a vengeful and you die on their side of the map, so there might not even be any, you know, consequence to you dying. Exactly. So, so Hani actually invoked the Alacrity to try and help with the push, so therefore he didn't have the, because of only level one invoke, mm. he didn't have the cooldown to get the EMP afterwards. True. And they might just sack top tower, but I believe they're gonna go there, and yes, they are. They want to defend this, because they know Vengeful is not dead for that long, and they have more than enough to defend them. They even see rotations coming up as well with their uh, ward on the... I guess it's not Mount Everest, but... Mount Everest... Well, that mountain fascinates one. me. That yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what you it's would call shrine. this mountain. It is some kind of a shrine. There are yeah, steps. To You're the, clearly to meant the to the go up there, but... Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's something. The somebody, I, I remember somebody I like telling it. me one time what it is exactly. Really? And I've forgotten. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's a Stargate. Thanks, Weppas. Thank very, you, very Weppas. Just so get back to observing, you scrub. Yeah, stop fighting. Jesus. I still love the Weppas. Robot. That's the most I've said in like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is. Radiant's Go back to talking. Jesus. Um, so, what do you expect that 
we're going to see on Ace, some bat riders really like to get the BKB going after you have your Blink and your Force Staff. Do you think that's going to be the item of choice, or do you think he wants to have a Travels just to be able to mm. always I think he in? goes for Yules in this game, because mm. like you can stop the Witch Doctor ulti, you can just hold Bristleback down just for like, even if it's only two and a half seconds, it's just like, get out of this fight for a second, we need to concentrate. Yeah, Yules Scepter could be really good, and I believe it is going to be a Yules Scepter. He buys up the Sobi Mask, so he confirms. Probably heard you, and like, yep, Shane, we got it. Yeah. So, uh, no problem, Ace. Most of the map control right now is really just alliances, and I don't see how you're going to play out of it. And this is sort of the problem that most of the Lycan picks have run into. How do you control the enemy team enough so that you can be the wolf at their door? Because right now, you're a wolf in a den somewhere, crying and, you know, not being care kept. I think it has also has a lot to do with Ace. Like, he got so much in the offlane, and when you're trying to split push with the Lycan, you don't know where the bad rider is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I, that is why Batrider gets banned for second shipping. I mean, they always spells are good. Okay. Tries to TP out here. He does take a lot of damage. Death Ward is going to secure the kill on him. I like the attempt to TP out there, though. But Trixie chasing on to Vengeful here, trying to run away, but so slowed down. Trixie also has no mana. Fisher is Force ready. Stats. So yeah, I believe it's just straight up like oh, Tornado! Yo! The big save! Big swap! Oh wow! Oh, he actually got like, sound! Thanks for nothing! He's gonna live. What a beast. Th that's a beautiful save by Invoker right there. And the fact that he could Radiant's just gold stalk and run away himself attack. immediately after. It's and a ri risky play though when, when Boogie has sentry wards. It is a risky play, but he's so damn fast. And also, I guess it's fine because they are, after all, split him top at the same time. Mm -hmm. so, so even if he dies, it's Even if they lose one hero there, they kept so much uh, attention that Loda is just like, okay, thank you, suckers, I'll take your top tower. No one even noticed. So Loda is, has two and a half K gold here as well. Yeah, he's gonna go into Manta style maybe? Manta style or even gonna go into a heavier item of something like uh, like a full butterfly before he gets anything else. Ace does have the entire Yule Scepter flying out to him now. I like this scout from, um, from Lycan. Keeping a wolf on top of him so they know where Batrider is going. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. There's even a ward right here, really though, smart, so like. Ace, not going to be so sneaky this time. <laughs> He's got his Yule Scepter. Roche, once again, up, and again, the minus armor from Bench and Medallion. Oh, that's Lowry, you're right-clicking. I mean, it's crazy damage. Even the familiars are getting the food shot aura as well, so... I like that bringing the, uh, using the Helmet of Dawn to bring a creep to take yeah, it yeah. for you. Yeah. That's the kind of stupid crap I always forget. Mm. That's true, that's true. It's really a sweet thing, so... Manta Style seems to be the item of choice on Draw Ranger, picking it up. Holy crap. Away. So Aki has a Rod of Aoi. Did you notice this? Yeah, he went for the it's crazy went for good, Rod of Atos since then. Especially, death. like, imagine Bristleback with a Rod of Atos on him. Like, mm. like what, 50% of the time? Yeah, Viper is also a good target. So yeah, BB true. and Viper are really easily controlled now from, uh, mm. from Ake. And, of course, he can't do anything about the Lycan, but that's not his job as a Visage in this game. That's completely up to the Invoker and to the Batrider and Vengeful, so they can actually disable him. But I like the way the Alliance is shaping this first game, and they're looking really strong to take this one. For ASE now finally gonna go and attempt to get some towers pushed. They have only taken one tower Radiant's in 23 minutes. Is under attack. Yeah. This is sort of what we see in all the Lycan games, though. I mean, used to be like, oh, someone picked Lycan, all the towers are gone in like 12 minutes. But now... It's really hard to even it, bring down the tier. Honestly, it has a lot to do with Minus Radiant's and the pressure he put on bottom lane at the start of the game. Like, he rot rotated Dying down and they killed like in fortified. three times or two times? Yeah. yeah. Like, and then he was 2 2 something Radiant's at some point in the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really big actually. Just attack. making your off lane a little Dying's bit more than just a sacrifice. Making it so that Batrider can fight he down there. He actually won the lane. Yeah. Yeah. I also think all that fire meant the lane didn't really push out in their favor at all. Fire everywhere. It's like. Tricky. That's true. Well, they are afraid of fire too. I mean, you know, don't they you are they? Back. Yeah. Did oh you, yeah. Aragorn got rid of him in the Lord of the Rings with a big fire. Yeah. yeah. Fact. Fact. <laughs> 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 All right. So the Aegis push here on bottom now with the Drow Ranger, dealing a lot of damage to the tower just by the vengeful aura and Drow stacking up when they're walking together. Dyer's Even the familiars hitting like trucks. Of course, they get the Drow aura as long as they're close to her, or if she ever takes it. So. Working sort of similar to our hero. So Hani has three poke points in invoke now as well, so he's way more capable in team fights. Yeah, I mean he could probably even throw out a, a ghost wall. It's not gonna be that effective on level three quest though, but the max EMP is really a dangerous thing. Anyone can hit by that, it's not gonna throw anything. Just putting up an early ghost wall so that no one can run up and the zoning. Yeah. 
I think after you use those two spells though, not sure if it's so good that he throws them immediately, because after you use them, the enemy queen knows that he doesn't have anything for a while. The cooldown on them is very low though. Yeah, it's low, but right when they're down, the oh, yeah, it's cool. alliance have to back for a little bit. We talked about this again though, they have no initiation. Like, mm. look how close Jerex is to Blind Dagger, holy crap. Yeah, he's actually just 20 gold away from Blink look, right now. This Fisher is going to so, make or break yeah, the game. Yeah, he's going to get one beat and he has to tire oh, Blink Dagger by two rates. The fight starts and Batrider already goes down here to Witch Talker actually. It's a little bit of a fail initiation, I think. Maybe they just want to pull out our alliance. Trying to get away. He's looking for the big slam. That was really, really fortunate that they were so fast in their reaction on the Batrider jump. It was the Echo Slam. Dyer's yeah, actually slams him immediately when he jumped in there. So really good reactions by Jerex. Well played. And uh, now Alliance, of course, they did lose one hero. But they're still sitting around on bottom lane. What are you trying to do? Get rid of it. Hit, uh, hit the hide button. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shane actually being confused by the tools that are given to spectators. Sorry. It's it's fine. Forgive me. He doesn't um, actually spectate it on his own half the time. He just looks at your screen. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> Even what I do. He has one right in front of him. That he like, control. like three screens by the front of him. Anyway, maybe he's using his spare and fixing all the mana is gone immediately and quite a bit of damage dealt as well. But again, no real base damage being dealt yet. So, I mean, Alliance are poking, but without Batrider grabbing anyone, this is really harmless, to be honest, because they didn't deal any damage to the Rex. <laughs> and this ward in uh, for ASC's base is really good, by the way. I could not see who planted this or when. Oh, actually, it was Batrider. You can see the trail of trees that died as he ran in and placed this ward. <laughs> so. Detective Waga on the base. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, he's like more. <laughs> Sneaky, sneaky snake. Wow, the range rack's just going down so fast when no one leaves or no one has anything to do with here. And there goes the grab back right now pulling them in. Can they bring him down without his team helping out? Look at the damage! He's doing his back turn. Hmm, quite a bit of damage coming out. Nice control by Honey as well. But in the end, you don't want to overextend here. Because if you jump in too deep, suddenly the damage can be Jerks. turning your way. Radiance nice Fisher block, but again, attack. Alliance just sitting tight together. At yeah, least they survived the Batrider grab, and that's the most important thing. I think what they're trying to do is try and get two people in the EMP tornado, and then let's go. Like, every time they've only got one in Vipers, like, making sure to stay back with the mechanism. Yeah. Like, so he's not getting moved yet. Also, I think 4ASE really tries to just wait until they can get the Echo Slam here, mm -hmm. because they need it so badly. Sad part is, it's still level 1 Echo Slam, so it doesn't deal that much damage at this stage. We're hitting Radiant almost into 30 minutes into the game, attack. and you kind of need to get level 2 on it, just to get some extra damage. Ancients are stacked on the Radiant side, and then Visage does know about it. Just look at the the dire on the map, like, look where they're farming. They're farming everywhere. Emperor, four, yeah. like, four anchors. The there. entire Radiant jungle is farmed, and I believe it's not by the Radiant. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Honey looking like a suspect as well, running around with that poison. Anyway, Draw Ranger now picking up an Eagle Song. Meanwhile, on top lane, Jerex Damn. actually get cancelled on his TP out by this haste Batrider. I don't think Batrider realized that he actually got him there. No. Ace just running away. He could have definitely went. Look how much utility that Batrider has. Oh, they're trying to kill him now with the blink stun. Can they actually get him? He has a new scepter. He's not using it. Oh, pretty late. He'll get it. He'll get he the bottle blink. during it. Very nice that he clicks the bottle first during that Yule scepter, getting some heal in there, and then blinks out. That was really, a nice play. Really beautiful day survives. Uh, for ASC, he cannot catch a break here against Alliance. So that's, again, ES ulti being used, Witch Doctor ulti being used, and nothing really for it. And Batrider even kept his ulti doing that. We still like haven't seen any split pushing from the Visage with Lotus uh, passive. To now they haven't been ratting that much with it, but he hasn't also built into that. I mean, normally you would go for the Aghanims if you want to do that, but instead he's trying to just control the team fight. Yeah, so yeah. he's using the birds more like an extra shield, <laughs> so that people don't dive in on a draw ranger. Just always being there and ready to stun whenever the enemy team is walking in. So I like the do way they Do you think at this. that point that he's just managing them, or do you think he's giving them to Loder and said, "Look, have a have a couple of birds"? No, 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 no. no. I, I think Loder needs fully to focus on what he's doing. Also, I mean, Aki is a phenomenal micro player, oh, yeah, so yeah. this guy he's he's His more than is capable beautiful. of controlling these. Could he leave one with, with Loader and then use his other two to bugger Wait, off when he gets The left eggs? one or the right one? Well, whichever. <laughs> <laughs> I think he gives nuts. them He's to my nuts, right? Yeah. 
Um, to be honest, I think the the weakness is when you split up your your familiars. They can't do that much on their own. Mm. Meanwhile, if you have both of them, you can chain stun someone long enough for them to be caught out by something like Batrider or Invoker. So the potential is much higher when they go together. Solo nuts, not that good. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. So the Radiant only have like a ward here and one like on, on the sh like above the shrine, and uh, Alliance are like completely playing around this and just. Well, they have a nice lane ward on bottom as well. That's gonna show if anyone wants to push there, and gonna show it nice and early, which is important. Radiant they might try to, but the, they're really weak in the middle. Oh, but they're revealing themselves. And Batrider pulling them across the shrine, up on the shrine. Oh, actually. oh, oh it's, it's a sacrifice! sacrifice. It's a sacrifice! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh no! Oh, Batrider actually throws him down again. He's not worthy. He's not gonna be up on the shrine any longer. <laughs> Halberd going down on Brow Ranger, so he cannot attack this person. Oh, the Necro Book chasing him. Oh no, Vixie slowly here. Like them, of course, did get the battery, right, but went down through the Visage Guards in the end. And Bristol back also gonna take a fall. And I think Batrider is more than fine with dying after he already got the grab and pulled in he the actually most important enemy here. He died to the Necro Book from Lycan. He killed yeah. it with the fire and yeah. just like uh, got gazapped. It's a sad way to die. It really is. Radiant's top tower is Visage under very close to having the entire Aghanims and his Rod of Aethos this game. He's just 800 gold away. That's and a sheep stick on handy that's now. Ridiculous. I think he was thinking about getting the four stuff because he bought the... Mid lane, jumping uh, here on Lorda. Might do it. Full hand with the Everything. ES. All the damage with the Witch Doctor ulti as well. So Lorda being caught out, out of position. But that's the first time he has died this game. So that's one what time out of position, but it's punished immediately. That's yeah. what they need. Especially yeah. like the experience they gained from that. Like Sometimes when you're falling behind this hard, like the enemy is controlling the entire map, Players usually say that you come to this position where you need to rely on an enemy mistake to change the game. Yeah, like there's nothing you can do better. Exactly. It's and what they do worse. The most important thing is actually to be able to see these mistakes. Like this guy is actually alone, or just have the balls to say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that you're alone and hope that yeah. you don't have your team with you. In this case, they brought him down nice and quick. But can they get any objective along with it? Buyback is actually available on Loda, so they might just respect this and back off. I think they just farm up the Ags on Ake. Like that's their next goal here. They're just like, okay, you got the jungle, you chill. Dyer's your Ags. Tower is under attack. Like yeah. so close to it. Yeah, over on no Alliance, damage. almost got the, the entire Aghanims, as you say. Witch Doctor working on his own Aghanims, so. And Hani goes in with the Hex, gonna poke it on the Witch Doctor, trying to bring him down. Mana Burn is there, but with the Halberd, he cannot actually keep clicking. Oh, it's a nice save by Trixie. I can't shake your hand. One thing though, like. I really think that Visage Agnims is so much more powerful than Witch Doctor Agnims. I, I, I can hear though. Andy backstage yeah, talking about his hand. He can't shake. I can left hand shake. He can left hand shake. I can yeah. still hear Andy. He the, can the, give the, him his left, left hand shake. Area. Come on, give me the handshake. Yes. Sweet. Well, anyway, top lane here. You see Batrider going on to a light end. Trying to go into the Visage Birds. And no chain stun available. Ooh. Or at least not going down. The Yule Scepter should maybe be enough here. Necrobook goes down, but this time he's gonna live. Meanwhile, Hani also lands a kill with his gang. And Lycan does, in the end, bring down Batrider. Did mm. he die to... but the... Hmm? This time he died to normal. They must have died the in, Necro a, thing. in a conflagration. Yeah. He did. Necro babies. The Necro babies. Uh -huh. The bane of the... <laughs> Oh, there's oh, there's cheese. Yeah. Now we've seen how effective cheese can be alliance in the hands of Alliance the players. Cheese. They love a bit of cheese. Yeah. The dire side is so effective when you're Alliance. You just need all the cheese. So Butterfly is done. And uh, Loda now looking to push bottom lane once again with the Aegis. And they have already taken one Rax here. So maybe they can commit and just go in with the Aegis and bring this down. I think they Hani needs one more level. And then he has double Forge Spirits. And then all of a sudden they can just sit back and let the Forge Spirits push with the, the bonus damage from my nuts and uh, Loda. Yeah, and of course the Familiars and the Manta style from the yeah, exactly. is really the army, they, they can just chill. the army feature. Of course with the Aghanims now sending out the, the full Full triple familiar. Is there a Swedish cheese called Svetsia? I have no idea. Okay. Um, I don't think. I'm gonna say no. There is. Nice I ball. put it in a rap song. Was it nice? Why did you ask if uh, you knew? Because I didn't. You were yeah, there you go. Swedish. Thank you, Milton. Yeah, see, I was pronouncing I wasn't sure I was pronouncing it right. There is actually one. Okay. So maybe that's the kind of cheese that the, the Alliance guys are grabbing from the Rishman. Most likely. Most likely the 
Pressure now, Ghost Walk going in, looking for some kill here. When you do this, you have to be really careful that there's no sentry ward. And there is actually currently no sentry ward down. Also don't want to walk into the creeps and reveal the fact that he's invising right over them. And this time it seems that they want to send a familiar on top lane, but Trixie has seen this. He knows what you're up to, Ake. You're not gonna get this away for free, and of course the quills are so strong against uh, the Yeah, familiars. that's so weird. I'm, I mean, it's, it's one of the only spell effects that affects the wizard. There, there are right? some physical spells that can that can deal damage. I actually, yeah. I feel bad for criticizing Hani's choice of cross him because honestly, I think it's one of the most key things in this entire it's game. Big, isn't yeah, it? it has worked really well for them, and I guess it's easy to go full greed and say that the, it was the very greed to boss go exhort would be, you know, very nice damage and synergize mm -hmm. reasonably, but just all the control that he has been providing this game, and also the fact that I've never seen Hani before playing the Quas Wax, and he has done it beautifully in this game. Do you think they've done it because it's like, well, we can set up fights with the bat when Trying it goes to go wrong? Go on to Hani here with the Fisher, force stepping across the Fisher to get out. And Do sorry, I, what you were saying? No, I was just going to say, it seems like if the bat, oh, he's going to sacrifice him on the altar. No, not attack. this time. No, trying to get him up, but not going to happen this time. So let's but. say that you try to initiate with the Bat Rider in a fight. It goes wrong, gets interrupted, whatever. He can sort of reset the fight. It's a bit like a nag of song. He just goes like, Tornado EMP, back up, we'll try it yeah. again. To try and save Trixie here. It's in a bad spot with all this slow going out. Boogie needs to back up a little bit as well. It's a solo on HP. Tornado being thrown up just for control, and Loda keeps chasing. Really so strong with the Blink Dagger. Bottom lane, meanwhile, Lycan chasing after the vegetable. Trying to bring her Bots down. Radiant's bottom barracks are yeah, under the, attack. This really lacking as the two supports, but then Ace coming in. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh there it goes! Oh, he's he really fell into a ring of time. fire. Trying to oh, deal enough ready. damage onto a Batrider so he can kill him with uh, the fire again, yeah. but not gonna happen this time. Instead, focusing onto a Invoker, but he's gonna be just fine. He can get out of this. So kills going down, only killing the Lycan really, but maybe this is enough to open up the map. But how they lost a lot of HP. How do you how do you come back? Like you have Hanny and you have the bots on Ace. Like how do you get out of your base to push with the Lycan? I it's I really so difficult because their lineup is not that great. If you don't control the early game and you cannot get towers taken, you have no in built, you have no built in combat mechanics, so again, you rely on enemy mistakes. And look at those familiars oh, taking wow. the melee racks down so quickly with the aura. This time, of course, Flower Ranger was not there, so yeah, you click the aura. That's why they're going for a pull, and Boogie goes down immediately. These wow. birds are dangerous. X goes down on Pixie, and all the damage to be dealt to him. Yes, it's a really big slam, jumping in, double kill already, bringing down Anke yeah, as well. Jerax dealing the damage. He is gonna die in the end. This one single bird dealing so much damage, the two other ones coming back in as well. That rider thinking about jumping in on this. He's definitely tempted. Yeah, he wants to. He knows he's the best bird around. Goes wow. in. Yule Scepter on cooldown. He's gonna die to the sniper strike. No way to get out. So pretty much everything <laughs> dying. Uh, only the familiars alive, and of course Lycan Loda. and Rao, who were not even in the fight to begin with. Loda had ages, and he didn't play. Yeah, he still has the ages, so he can, he can do whatever he wants here. <laughs> he just pushes, he's like, okay. Yeah, that's Let's just go win. Really ridiculous to see the combo there of Visage, and this really explained why a lot of teams put the emphasis that when someone picks Rao, you have to snatch up the Visage, the Visage or at least ban it if you can. But, uh, you know, first phase picking Growl and Visage, there's nothing to counter that unless you ban one of them in the first phase. Do you think, I think Batrider kind of counters it a little bit. I think like if you go in on the, the Drow early game and put the pressure on, like it really shuts them down. Because they just let him do whatever he wanted. Like he just yeah, had a, they did. Yeah, trying to contest okay. against the, uh, the Drow Ranger in some way. And I think you're on to the right track at least with the Batrider. I don't think on lane that you can do so much against the Drow. No, yeah, Drow like, is great against Like her. mid game, you just punch But him. mid game, as you say. If you think about what happened to poor old Lycan in lane, mm. I mean, he got. It was like a nightmare for him there. Yeah. It was. It's a bad time for that. He has BKP finish now, though. Yeah, look at Yay. top lane, by the way. The birds are being a nuisance to this rain tracks, so it has already lost a lot of its HP, and they will keep going in here as soon as no one is there to defend. Boogie is trying to defend it, but, I mean, he's a witch doctor. He's not going to kill these birds fast enough. So, Loda has uh, 340 creep kills. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. has been farming plenty in this game. He has 6,200 gold <laughs> now, and uh, along with his butterfly, he was probably going to add up the same item as last time. But what about know, a satanic that, that would here? be an E-Blade, but in this game, 
Yeah, I think he can go E-Blade. BKB would be decent, but it doesn't do anything against Lycan, doesn't do anything against BB, it doesn't do anything against the Viper. Of course, you are countering the ES and Witch Doctor, mm -hmm. but if ES jumps you, it doesn't matter if you have a BKB in your inventory. You won't get it off. Is yeah. That he does buy it, so I guess relying on being really fast. You need to pretty much hover one of your hand or one of your fingers over your BKB hotkey when you're pushing hand high run now. Or just get like a, a step under your chair that you're like just Oh yeah, like a bass oh, yeah. drum. You hear the bat rider pulling up, someone, up, pulling Jerox. We got him. Yeah. Actually Oh nice. Gets him much far, but he's gonna be fine. Trying to kill him with the birds as well. It's a Sanji Yasha on the bat rider by the way, so Dang. speed speed speed. Uh, very fast. Not even max movement speed with this build. But um That's pretty crazy. 498. Oh, Loda finds a nice little present here on the top lane. Holy crap, look at that damage. Ice Frog rewards him with a DD rune. He actually hits for more than 600 damage right now. <laughs> 629. Yeah, that is amazing damage. What are what are Alliance waiting for? Like the the next Aegis? Is that the plan? Like just farm up Lotus like the Lotus got his yeah, BKB. I believe, I believe they just want to take the Aegis. Because the Aegis can be available and you can drop your life skill for example, or even drop your blink dagger, but I believe you rank blink you dagger stack, higher. You don't, you don't stack cheese on honey oh, because it'll be. Can you get the swap? No. Okay. Uh, no, I think you almost want to pass one over to Batrider. Yeah. Drop your bottle and have the cheese available for him as well. But when, you're, when your biggest problem is how to stack your cheeses and who's carrying which cheese, <laughs> you're, you're yeah. either DKIG from a very, very long game that some might remember, or, the lone game. or you're having some luxury issues. Yeah. Okay. They have two 10 second BKBs, and when they get the Aegis, they'll have an Aegis. So, four anchors, like, they have to keep their so sand. Again, the well, much. Again, the shrine is gonna be the place for this bristle back. That's so Ace as he just pulls oh him up God. here. TP is available he for him, of course, but he you have the Yules and you have the little flame rake. Oh, but uh, Jarek with the body system coming up and just forced that. I had down. no idea you could put a person in a shrine. That you is my new goal. You couldn't for a very long time. For a until very long time they made it a ward yeah. yeah. So uh, as soon as you can put a ward there, you can put a person there as well. Like, Annie's running around the jungle, like, in Ghost Walk. So even if they have wards in the jungle, they still don't know where he is, like. Yeah. So the Mid lane, Valix is going to be farming there, but I don't think that's an ideal target. But yes, I see. He's pretty with beefy. With around, you could go on him, but it's dangerous. They're just pinging Roshan and saying that, you know, around now, it might be up. Let's keep track of that. The wolves are revealing the supports of Alliance, so nice micro going down from 4ASC but really being constricted so hard on this map, not a, allowed to farm at all. And even top lane, you know, you have Batrider constantly pulling people onto the shrine <laughs> as soon as they show up. It's not a pleasant place to be. I'm trying to sacrifice you. Look at the amount of items in Roshan. Yeah, like there's, there's stick, a lot of stuff. Stick, Band, Ring of Bassy, oh, yeah. And all the bones and stuff. That's a lot of gold. But yeah. And the wolf is there, so they know about it. Actually, they're going really aggressive here, trying to bring down the match. They're gonna try and kill him. He's so damn tanky, and he can swap anyone oh. and then blink. Oh, wow. Loda put he, me in, coach. No, Loda doesn't uh, actually whoops. blink back. Instead, he just BKBs. Did Dyer's courier die as well? That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, stick up a BKB. Meanwhile, I mean, the kind of not-so-interesting fight of Trixie and Ace going down the top lane, but I guess Trixie gets pulled back pretty far now and might be stuck here, but... Yeah, he's actually pretty oh, likely wow. to go down here. Seven stacks. Not There's able to get out this stack. The are meant to be on his side. I just want to point that out. Yeah, but death. his team has to go in 4v5 now and fight oh, here Valix. as Ace is likely to join up. Valix gets clicked no, down no. so hard. All the right click damage, and there's even Ace keeping down to bottom lane and trying to intercept here. Lads, there's a cheese in the pit, like, go back and get the cheese. Yeah, well, they don't care about the cheese now. Just chasing and trying to get down the Lycan, killing him off first and chasing on to Boogie. Nice Fisher though, but Blink Dagger's available and so many heroes, even Swap is ready. Just gotta kill Boogie first. Can he catch one more with this Swap? It's a max level Swap. Five back. He has Blink and Five back from seconds. the Hedgehog. Hmm. They could, maybe. He tries there to get is. it, he does get the Swap off. Look Fisher. at the bird's mid while this is all happening. Like they're annihilating the right. Yeah, the birds are doing so much damage, and this is Radiant probably gonna be it for 4 yeah. ASD. Realizing that there's Radiant's no real way to stop this, they have no buyback available on Lycan, no buyback on their Viper Radiant's either, so this is just looking very desperate. Nice pressure, but not to, not enough, and uh, it's gonna be a GG call from the Finch stack. So. Alliance does it in the first game, taking down for ASC in a pretty convincing fashion as well. That was 
ridiculous move. Yeah, but this is something that a lot of people would consider, you know, and she's strapped, taking that Rao and uh, Visage together and doing it at first phase, no less, just taking them before the enemy can do anything about it. Um, I'm curious to see how far 